everyone. I hope all of you are feeling mightily blessed by the Lord Almighty God. I know I am. Today is Sunday, so I went to church this morning, and we had a beautiful time with worship in the presence of the Lord, and we heard a great word that will keep us sustained for the day. Today on this channel is day 22 in our Chronological Bible in a Year video podcast. Today is Sunday, January 22nd. For yesterday, day 21, we read Genesis 27 through 29, which included Jacob stealing the blessing of Esau by fooling his father Isaac, who was blind, and tricking him into thinking that he was Esau, so he received the blessing that Esau was supposed to get. We see then Jacob fleeing from Esau because Esau was so upset that he wanted to kill him. He flees to his mother, Rebekah's brother, Laban, and there he takes two wives, Leah and Rachel. We continue on in our story in Genesis 30 for day 22. I'll pray us into the word and we will get right into it. Father God, we come before you today, Father, thanking you for once again giving us another day of life, Father God, giving us another day that we can go into your word, Father God, that we have the ability to read and to hear your word, Father God. I pray that you bless this word, that we may understand, Father God, and we may see what you are trying to tell us today. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. We continue on with Jacob's story today. In Genesis 30, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Word of God reads, Genesis 30, when Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. She said to Jacob, give me children, or else I will die. Jacob's anger burnt against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's place, who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? She said, Behold, my maid, Billa, go in to her, that she may bear on my knees, and I also may obtain children by her. She gave him Billa, her servant, as wife. And Jacob went in to her. Billah conceived and bore Jacob a son. Rachel said, God has judged me and has also heard my voice and has given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. Billah, Rachel's servant, conceived again and bore Jacob a second son. Rachel said, I have wrestled with my sister with mighty wrestlings and have prevailed. She named him Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had finished bearing, she took Zilpah, her servant, and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Zilpah, Leah's servant, bore Jacob a son. Leah said, How fortunate! She named him Gad. Zilpah, Leah's servant, bore Jacob a second son. Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me happy. She named him Asher. Reuben went in the days of wheat harvest, and found mandrakes in the field, and brought them to his mother, Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. Leah said to her, Is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? Rachel said, Therefore he will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. Jacob came from the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, You must come in to me. For I have surely hired you with, your son, with my son's mandrakes. He lay with her that night. God listened to Leah 
and she conceived, and bore Jacob a fifth son. Leah said, God has given me my hire, because I gave my servant to my husband. She named him Issachar. Leah conceived again, and bore a sixth son to Jacob. Leah said, God has endowed me with a good dowry. Now my husband will live with me, because I have borne him six sons. She named him Zebulun. Afterwards she bore a daughter, and named her Dina. God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her, and opened her womb. She conceived, bore a son, and said, God has taken away my reproach. She named him Joseph, saying, May the Lord add another son to me. When Rachel had born Joseph, Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, that I may go to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you, and let me go. For you know my service with which I have served you. Laban said to him, If now I have found favor in your eyes, stay here, for I have divined that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. He said, Appoint me your wages, and I will give it. Jacob said to him, You know how I have served you, and how your livestock have fared with me. For it was little which you had before I came, and it was increased to a multitude. The Lord has blessed you wherever I turned. Now when will I provide for my own house also? Laban said, What shall I give you? Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed your flock and keep it. I will pass through all your flock today, removing from there every speckled and spotted one, and every black one amongst the sheep and the spotted and speckled amongst the goats. This will be my hire. So my righteousness will answer for me hereafter, when you come concerning my hire that is before you. Every one that is not speckled and spotted amongst the goats, and black amongst the sheep, that might be with me, will be considered stolen. Laban said, Behold, let it be according to your word. That day he removed the male goats that were streaked and spotted, and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had white in it, and all the black ones amongst the sheep, and gave them into the hands, into the hand of his sons. He set three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Jacob took to himself rods of fresh poplar, almond, and plane tree, peeled white streaks in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods. He set the rods which he had peeled opposite the flocks in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink. They conceived when they came to drink. The flocks conceived before the rods, and the flocks produced streaked speckled, and spotted. Jacob separated the lambs and set the faces of the flocks towards the streaked and all the black in Laban's flock. He put his own droves apart and didn't put them into Laban's flock. Whenever the stronger of the flock conceived, Jacob laid the rods in front of the eyes of the flock in the watering troughs that they might conceive amongst the rods. But when the flocks were feeble, he didn't put them in. So the feebler were Laban's, and the stronger Jacob's. The man increased exceedingly, and had large flocks, female servants, and male, first, male servants, 
and camels, and donkeys. Genesis 31 Jacob heard Laban's son's words, saying, Jacob has taken away all that, our, all that was our father's. He has obtained all this wealth from that which was our father's. Jacob saw the expression on Laban's face, and behold, it was not towards him as before. The Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field to his flock, and said to them, I see the expression on your father's face, that it is not towards me as before. But the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength, all of my strength. Your father has deceived me and changed my wages ten times, but God didn't allow him to hurt me. If he said, The speckled will be your wages, then all the flock bore speckled. If he said, The streaked will be your wages, then all the flocked, the flock bore streaked. Thus God has taken away your father's livestock and given them to me. During mating season, I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the male goats which leapt on the flock were streaked, speckled, and grizzled. The angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, here I am. He said, Now lift up your eyes, and behold, all the male goats which, lap, which leap on the flock are streaked, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban does to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar, where you vowed a vow to me. Now arise, get out from this land and return to the land of your birth. Rachel and Leah answered him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Aren't we considered as foreigners by him? For he has sold us, and has also used up our money. For all the riches which God has taken away from our father are ours, and our children's. Now then, Whatever God has said to you, do. Then Jacob rose up and set his sons and his wives on the camels. And he took away all his livestock and all his possession, possessions which he had gathered, including the livestock which he had gained in Padan Aram, to go to Isaac his father, to the land of Canaan. Now Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole the teraphim that were her father's. Jacob deceived Laban the Syrian, and that he didn't tell him that he was running away. So he fled with all that he had. He rose up, passed over the river, and set his face toward the mountain, towards the mountain of Gilead. Laban was told on the third day that Jacob had fled. He took his relatives with him and pursued him seven days' journey. He overtook him in the mountain of Gilead. God came to Laban the Syrian in a dream of the night and said to him, Be careful that you don't speak to Jacob either good or bad. Laban caught up with Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mountain, and Laban with his relatives encamped in the mountain of Gilead. Laban said to Jacob, What have you done, that you have deceived me, and carried away my daughters like captives of the sword? Why did you flee secretly and deceive me, and didn't tell me, that I might have sent you away with mirth and with songs, with tambourine and with harp? and didn't allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters. 
now have you done foolishly. It is in the power of my hand to hurt you. But the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Be careful that you don't speak to Jacob either good or bad. Now, you want to be gone, because you greatly longed for, for your father's house. But why have you stolen my gods? Jacob answered Laban, Because I was afraid, for I said, Lest you should take your daughters from me by force. Anyone you find your gods with shall not live. Before our relatives, discern what is yours with me, and take it. For Jacob didn't know that Rachel had stolen them. Laban went into Jacob's tent, into Leah's tent, and into the tent of the two female servants. But he didn't find them. He went out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the teraphim put them in the camel's saddle, and sat on them. Laban fent all around all the tent, but didn't find them. She said to her father, Don't let my lord be angry that I can't arise, that I can't rise up before you, for I am having my period. He searched, and didn't find the teraphim, but didn't find the teraphim. Jacob was angry and argued with Laban. Jacob answered Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin that you have hotly pursued me? Now that you, now that you have felt around in all my stuff, what have you found of all your household stuff? Said it here before my relatives and your relatives that they may judge between us two. Twenty, these twenty years I have been with you. Your ewes and your female goats have not cast their young, and I haven't eaten the rams of your flocks. That which was torn of animals, I didn't bring to you. I bore its loss. Of my hand you required it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. This was my situation. In the day the drought consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sleep fled from my eyes. These twenty years I have been in your house. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters, and six years for your flock. And you have changed my wages ten times. Unless the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac, had been with me, surely now you would have sent me away empty. God has seen my affliction and the labor of my hands, and rebuked you last night. Laban answered Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, the children are my children. The flocks are my flocks, and all that you see is mine. What can I do today to these my daughters, or to their children whom they, whom they have borne? Now, come, let's make a covenant, you and I. Let it be for a witness between me and you. Jacob took a stone and set it up for a pillar. Jacob said to his relatives, Gather stones. They took stones and made a heap. They ate there by the heap. Laban called it Jagar Sahadatha, but Jacob called it Galid. Laban said, This heap is witness between me and you today. Therefore it was named Galid and Mizpah, for he said, the Lord watch between me and you. When we are absent from one, we are absent one from another. If you afflict my daughters, or if you take wives in addition to my daughters, no man 
is with us. Behold, God is witness between you, me, and you. Laban said to Jacob, See this heap, and see the pillar, which I have set between me and you. May this heap be a witness, and the pillar be a witness, that I will not pass over this heap to you, and that you will not pass over this heap and this pillar to me for harm. The God of Abraham, and the God of Nahor, and the God of their father, judge between us. Then Jacob swore by the fear of his father, Isaac. Jacob offered a sacrifice in the mountain, and called his relatives to eat bread. They ate bread, and stayed all night in the mountain. Early in the morning, Laban rose up, and kissed his sons and his daughters, and blessed them. Laban departed, and returned to his place. Thank you, God, for your perfect word. So in the beginning of this passage we read, we see Jacob's family expanding. Rachel and Leah both want more sons and daughters. They're in sort of like a little competition between each other. And Rachel was barren, and Leah wasn't bearing any more children. So they both gave their servants to Jacob to have children with that they may have them as sons. And then the Lord blessed Leah with two more kids. So Leah bore Jacob six kids. And then Rachel, also her womb gets opened up by God, and she gives birth to Joseph. So those are Jacob's children that are also born to him there. Then we see how Laban has been conniving against Jacob. Each time Jacob has wanted to leave, Laban has raised his price for Jacob's departure with his uh, family. And Jacob finds out that each time that he has served his time, Jacob keeps, I'm sorry, Laban keeps upping the price in order to leave. So every time that God had given, had told Jacob that, all of these certain kind of livestock were going to be his. They all came out that way. So all of the livestock were Jacob's, and he was being prospered and prospered and prospered by God. Laban's sons see that they interpret this as Jacob is just taking away everything that is our father's and ours by right. So when Jacob leaves, God tells Jacob to go back to the land where he came where he made the vow to God that this was the place where God was, which was back in the, his father's land, Isaac, in Canaan. So Jacob takes his wives, he takes his children, he takes all of the livestock and all of his possessions, and they leave. And Rachel also takes the teraphim, the gods of Laban. So they leave, and then Laban catches up to him, but God tells him, do not speak good or evil to Jacob, his servant. So God tells, because he had gotten that message from God, he was told he couldn't do any harm to Jacob. And then he says, Jacob, why did you leave? Why, have you, why are you taking my, my family and my daughters as prisoners of war? And then Jacob says, if I hadn't gone this way, you would have kept me there forever. And you would then, when I would leave, you would leave me empty handed. So then, uh, at the end, they make a covenant right then and there. They make a pillar and a heap, saying that right here at that place, Laban wouldn't come past this place to do harm to Jacob, and Jacob wouldn't go past this place into Laban's land to do harm to Laban. Day 22 is complete. I hope you all enjoy and weren't blessed by it. Tomorrow, I hope you return for day 23. And I'll we'll pray us out for the day, and we will go about the rest of our day. Father God, we bless you, and we come before you today, Father, with a grateful heart, Father God. Thank you that every day we can learn something new from your word, Father God. I pray that for the rest of today, Father God, you bless us, and you keep us in your loving hand, Father God, and you keep us in your will, that we go exactly 
on the steps that you have placed us, Father God. I pray all of this, and I bless you, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Day 23 is tomorrow, and I hope you return for it. For today, have a blessed day. <laughs>